This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about Bitcoin Core's buggy code. And this is in response to a post by Jason, Jason 21 million. He writes, I know I'm talking into the abyss, but Core 30, this is Bitcoin Core version 30, which is the node software that's planned to come out in October. Core 30 doesn't force you to increase the op return. It just changes the default. You can just switch it back to 83 bytes. And he referenced me. A few thoughts on this. Number one, default settings really matter for what happens to the network. Since most people use software out of the box without changing the default settings. Number two, being able to configure how much data is allowed in op returns is a feature that has been marked by core, by the core devs as deprecated, quote unquote deprecated, which means that core devs no longer recommend using this setting, even in core 30, and are planning to quietly remove it in a later software release. But it gets even worse, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to revisit this post from June 10th that Luke Dasher did, and we'll be looking at item number one here. Don't let the bad actors trick you into thinking Bitcoin Core 30 allows you to re-enable the data carrier limit. This is referring to OpReturn. Number one, along with unlimiting the default, in other words, uncapping it, so it's now 100,000 bytes, which is only limited by the transaction size of a Bitcoin transaction, along with unlimiting the default, they also broke it further. The devs also broke it further. Data carrier size, setting it to 83 bytes now, as of core 30 allows for 83 outputs totaling 830 bytes of spam instead of just 92 bytes of spam parenthesis nine bytes of which couldn't be arbitrary as in core 29 and earlier so in bitcoin core 29 and before there's always been a hard-coded spam filter that ignored transactions with more than one op return output and refused to relay them. So if your node was running Bitcoin Core 29.1, 29 or before, it would not relay an op return transaction that had multiple uh, op return outputs in the transaction. This is yet another filter that the devs have now broken in Bitcoin Core 30. And this is the really bizarre point. We're actually now at the point where Bitcoin Core maintainers like Gloria are actually merging code that's widely known to contain a bug. And not a lot of people are aware of this. Luke points it out here. He says it's nefarious. Kixunil publicly reported it as a bug in the, in the pull request last month. The Instagibs and, and Gloria and everyone that acted, in other words, that approved of this, this change in the software, this PR, everyone that acted all chose to ignore it and proceed anyway. And if we take a look at the GitHub, we can see Kixunil here uh, pointing out that this is a bug and it changes how many outputs you can have containing op return. And then down here, we have Luke's response. This pull request, this PR shouldn't be merged at all. It should not be added to the software at all. But obviously to even be considered bugs like this would have to be fixed. Don't forget this script pub key lengths. So here's an actual bug that is now being that's now going to be merged into the code and is, an avail and is available in Bitcoin Core 30. As Luke points out here, this 830 bytes, this is per transaction, not per output. It gets to 830 bytes by having 83 outputs with one byte each plus nine overhead bytes. So that's 10 bytes total times 83 gets you to 830. We're talking about inputs and outputs here in a Bitcoin transaction. On the left is are the inputs here. On the right are the outputs. None of these happen to be an op return output. These are actual monetary uses of Bitcoin. But you can imagine a transaction now that has one input on the left or a couple inputs on the left and now has 83 outputs on the right. And all of them are op return outputs, which was not allowed until now. Uh, Adaman555 points out, he says, that's not 830 bytes of spam. That's 80 bytes of spam and 750 bytes of overhead. And then it gets a bit technical here, but I wanted to include this in the video for the more technical people who are going to watch us so they can dig a little deeper. I'm not going to claim to completely understand this. N value is not an arbitrary storage field, and you even acknowledge that. If someone just wants to take up block space without carrying data, they can do it in a million other ways. And Luke responds to this particular critique about overhead, which I think is important. Overhead, this is overhead that you would not have without the arbitrary data. So that's part of the spam as well, because this is unnecessary overhead. And you absolutely can abuse N value for more data. There's even 
clear precedent on this. When multiple pushes were added, the no longer fixed overhead got counted. So I don't completely understand that, but I'm sure someone watching this will, so I wanted to include it. Now, while this bug, this bug of being able to have 83 op return outputs in a transaction, while this bug pales in comparison to the huge, huge vulnerability that we've been talking about and that's been introduced by allowing Bitcoin Core 30 nodes to relay 100,000 byte op returns, that's turning Bitcoin Core 30 nodes into a CSAM relay service. Now, while this bug pales in comparison to that 100,000 byte problem, it's yet another indicator. This bug is yet another indicator of the quality of work we've come to expect from Core. Quote, don't worry about shipping buggy code since it's probably going to be removed soon anyway and has been marked as deprecated. So when Jason, Jason says to me here, you can just set the switch back down to 83 bytes. It's not equivalent now in core 30 they've completely broken that and now you can have multiple multiple outputs i think ghost of unhosted marcellus here does a great summary of this entire thing that's happened worth mentioning that core devs not only deprecated data carrier size in version 30 but also broke it and they all act the breakage that's just the unbelievable part manually setting it again to 83 bytes doesn't restore the old behavior so it's very good that we have all these eyes on the code and people figuring this stuff out. It looks like uh, Mike has opened up a PR. This is just a post uh, that was from, from today. Earlier today, I opened a PR to Bitcoin Core to remove the deprecation for the data carrier and data carrier size options. I realize this is a sensitive topic for Bitcoin Core users, so I'm also posting it here for both visibility and as a place for feedback. So that's this, I would say, is a start in the right direction, removing the deprecation, which, me, which means this configurability will not be removed in a later version of the software or will not automatically be, be removed if this goes through. But the thing is, as we've seen in this video, even if you don't deprecate this feature, this feature is already broken. And the real problem is not just that it's gonna be de deprecated, the real problem is this blows it open between now and then. Uh, and if it, is, if it is deprecated, then it blows it open perpetually to 100,000 byte op returns. So it's good to see some progress here, some movement, but the better thing would just be not to merge this or not to release core 30 with this particular pull request. If you want to dig a little bit deeper, I'll link to two videos in which I talk about this one, for example, Bitcoin Core 30 is a CSAM relay service, as well as this one that really summarizes the Bitcoin knots versus core debate in just eight minutes. So you can share with friends and family who are concerned about this. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.